Robert Steele, no introduction needed. You were with us earlier. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, get with us here this evening. There's a lot to talk about, Robert. And uh, so let's recap of what you're uh, feeling about what is happening with the bombings in Syria. Well, I think Donald Trump got chumped. And this is his Bay of Pigs moment. But to CIA Director Mike Pompeo's credit, all of my intelligence colleagues are saying that the CIA director got it right, told Trump this was a false flag, perhaps by CIA rogue elements, perhaps by French intelligence, most likely by the Mossad mm -hmm. uh, and the Saudis. Um, and Trump very, very foolishly then shut Mike Pompeo out of the decision meeting. Uh, the bottom line here is that Trump is being lied to. He's being manipulated. Jared Kushner may be a Mossad agent of influence. We don't know. Uh, but I am very, very concerned that Trump not only violated the Constitution, his missile attack was an impeachable act if anyone wanted to impeach him. Uh, I don't think they will. But I hope he will take this as a Bay of Pigs moment. He made a huge mistake. Now, some people are putting a positive spin on it, that this was his way of sucking the neocons in and that he has some plans for a major shakeup. Uh, I certainly hope that shakeup includes firing Jim Mattis and, um, and McMaster because Trump is surrounded by traitors right now. And if this is the one mistake, which, by the way, nobody died. No Russians died and no Syrians died and the runway was left intact. So this is possibly suggestive that this was a deal between Putin, Assad, and Trump, and that there are some interesting things going on. I think Trump is very smart. He's book smart and he's street smart, and I want him to succeed. But right now, this looks really, really bad. I agree. Yes, it does. Uh, Mr. Steele, so who gave Trump the intel that Assad was the culprit? Well, we know that the CIA did not give him that intel. So it most likely came from Jared Kushner coming back from um, his recent visit to the Middle East. It probably came from defense intelligence, uh, which is corrupt to the bone. Uh, and I suspect, based on some recent conversations I've had with some extraordinarily gifted people in the United Kingdom, I suspect that Israel is telling everybody that they have detected this massive chemical threat, that missiles will be fired at Israel with chemicals. This is the end of the world. Uh, and this is, in fact, Assad's doing a trial run before he attacks Israel. Okay? Mm -hmm. So wherever Trump is getting this intelligence, this intelligence is a lie. Mm -hmm. And the FBI, the counterintelligence element, and the CIA, which tried to do its job, are clearly not being listened to by Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been chumped. Yeah. So what role does McCain have in all of this, Robert? Ah, well, John McCain is being blackmailed by the CIA and in my personal opinion is starting to go senile if he's not already completely over the top. Uh, Lindsey Graham, his, his chubby little closet <laughs> gay twin, uh, is also being blackmailed by CIA. Um, Marco Rubio, who is also a closet gay, is probably being blackmailed by CIA. And f finally, Chuck Schumer, mm -hmm. who I believe is extremely nervous about what CIA and Mossad have on him. Remember that Jeffrey Epstein yes. is the pedophile Mossad agent who gets people on tape with children. Yes. Chuck Schumer is probably being blackmailed and certainly pressured by Israel. Um, so from where I sit, the President of the United States is being manipulated and he has a shitty staff. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the people around him who have the gravitas and the experience and the spine to protect him from making mistakes on this, of this magnitude. So do you think Netanyahu is involved also? Oh, Netanyahu is, Net, Netanyahu is a war criminal. Uh, there's no question about it. I mean, he joins Obama in that category. Uh, what he has done to the Palestinian people, and by the way, let me inform the American taxpayers that are listening to this, 
we pay Israel $30,000 for every man, woman, and child in Israel. Yeah. And they then turn around and spend that on illegal settlements and on atrocities against the Palestinians. I personally believe the United States of America should pull completely out of the Middle East, pull out of NATO, stop funding the Saudi Arabian military, which is useless against ISIS, and stop funding Israel. Yeah. If Donald Trump is going to be captured by the Zionists, then it's time we find a new president. So, you know, we haven't talked about this, Robert, but uh, this is just coming off my head right now. Doesn't Israel have a very strong air force? You know, that's an extremely important point to make, because not only do they have a strong air force, they also have the capacity to pretend to be someone else. Um, Israel has the ability to do a false flag air force attack. Uh, with airplanes that look like Assad's airplanes. Uh, Israel, in fact, did a very famous thing where it snuck into Gaddafi's compound and planted radio transmitters that made it look as if Gaddafi was sponsoring terrorism worldwide. So Israel is a master of the false flag. And, of course, Israel is the primary intellect behind 9-11, which Dick Cheney and the neocons took over. Um, so I believe that Donald Trump should have had people around him, and Steve Bannon got it right. He should have had people around him who, who should have said, Mr. President, do not touch this. Take no action. Do not commit American lives and troops and missiles overseas. Do not commit an unconstitutional act. So I personally think Donald Trump owes Steve Bannon an apology and he owes Jared Kushner a very deep counterintelligence investigation. And let me point out that it's very possible that Kushner was targeted on Ivanka Trump by Epstein and Maxwell. Um, Ghislaine Maxwell, who was former Epstein's partner, is the daughter of the most famous Israeli spy in the United States, Robert Maxwell. There's a book, Robert Maxwell, Israeli Super Spy. Robert Maxwell is the guy that led the push for Israel penetrating every computer in the United States with a program called Promise mm -hmm. that was the first major Trojan backdoor program. So picture Epstein and Maxwell's daughter, both Mossad agents, profiling Chelsea Clinton and Ivanka Trump from their very earliest days and then managing a Mossad operation to run a series of potential Jewish husbands in front of both of them until they finally fell to a Jewish husband of the Mossad's choice. Wow. This may sound like science fiction to you, but I'm telling you yeah. the Mossad is really, really good. Now, I would like to clear Jared Kushner. And there are two ways to clear him. The first way is to run him through three polygraph tests, one with the FBI, one with NSA, one with CIA. They each have their specializations and their abilities. The second way to clear him we have every email he's ever sent. We have every phone call he's ever made. They're in the NSA databases, but they're buried. The second way to clear him is to have William Binney, the most famous senior whistleblower from NSA commissioned, to lead a very quick task force to bring up all those emails and all those telephone calls and build a history of Jared Kushner from two years before he met Ivanka to today. If he He's talking to the Mossad. We will get him. Hey, Robert, we have a uh, question from one of our uh, uh, watchers. Angie, you want to read that? Okay. So he would like for you to comment on why Dunford would have invited Kushner to Iraq and why Kushner is by his side every minute these days. It makes me very wor worried that Kushner might actually be in charge and Dunford is being blackmailed or has been defeated. Dunford well, there's there's a couple of aspects to this. First off, Colonel K, the, the wife of Colonel Griggs, Mrs. K. Griggs, has four very famous YouTubes uh, in which she talks about the Marine Corps culture at the very top, at the general officer level, of what she calls the Nazi disease, which is a sadomasochistic homosexuality that is combined with the feeling that they can murder anyone. They murdered Colonel David Sabau at Marine Air Station El Toro because he was about to blow the whistle on the Marine Corps being a party to CIA smuggling of massive amounts of cocaine into the United States. So 
Number one, I'm very leery of the Marine Corps Mafia in charge of the Department of Defense right now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that some of them have been compromised. I'm a former Marine. Um, some of them may have been compromised. But I'm also aware that the Marine Corps sees Kushner's completely inappropriate power and role in the White House. And so it makes sense for the Marines to attach a general officer to Kushner. I personally think Kushner should be in charge of the Office of Presidential Personnel because Donald Trump needs someone like him that is very smart and very loyal, who may or may not be compromised as a uh, Mossad agent of influence over there. Priebus has put his own person over there, and Trump is being chumped by all of the people who are being picked in the Office of Presidential Personnel, they're basically mainlining establishment people who will betray Donald Trump every single day. Um, so I am not at all thinking that Kushner is in charge of anything, except perhaps, unwittingly, perhaps, manipulating Donald Trump for the benefit of Israel. Mm. Donald Trump threw away America first and put Israel first with yeah. this attack. Mm -hmm. He threw away the Constitution and created another imperial presidency. I've said this was Hillary Clinton in drag. Right. This is not Donald Trump's proudest moment. I'm ashamed of him. I think he made a mistake. I think he owes Steve Bannon an apology. And depending on what he does or does not do in the next week, I think Donald Trump just became a lame duck president. Wow. That's a shame. Uh, you know, so to follow up on that, what are your thoughts about the, the administration turmoil that's going on between Bannon and Kushner? Kushner? Well, part of the problem is that Trump wasn't ready to be president, and he did not use his time wisely between Election Day and Inauguration Day. And a big part of that is because he was making decisions based on his fear of being assassinated. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to settle the Republican right by taking on Rents Priebus, uh, who, by the way, may be gay. Um, and so we have some real issues there because Rents Priebus is bonded to the rigged system. Rents Priebus mm -hmm. and Paul Ryan are the personification of the rigged system. Yeah. Right. And so Rents Priebus threw away my 10-page memo to Trump delivered by certified mail on the 15th of December, more or less, seeking to get Trump to use the inaugural address to announce an electoral reform act that would unrig the system and would also give Donald Trump the support of a larger number of citizens than are now controlled by the two-party tyranny. So Judas Priebus basically screwed Donald Trump during that entire period from election day to inauguration day. Now, Donald Trump also took in way too many Goldman Sachs people, right. and I think he was trying to settle Wall Street. He was aware of the fact that Bill Clinton had basically been turned into Wall Street's puppy uh, by Rubin. But now I think Donald Trump is starting to realize that by bringing in friends, family, Wall Street, and traders from the Republican Party, he has essentially castrated himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have people like me and William Binney around him that really understand the system. He doesn't have a chief of staff like David Stockman. The other people he's looking at as chief of staff are lightweights. Mm -hmm. These are simply hanger honors. They're not people that actually can run the numbers. They're not people that understand the complexity of the 10 high level threats to humanity the broad spectrum of policies, the way in which you have to balance the budget between threats, between policies, between demographics. All of these people are cubicle dwellers, okay? They're not serious people. And so I'm very, very concerned that, that Donald Trump's selection process is being severely skewed mm -hmm. toward non-performers. I think he's going to make or break his presidency in the next 30 days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, so if Kushner can't be trusted, how do you think Trump is going to handle it, being that Ivanka is basically the apple of his eye? Let me say that we don't know yet that Kushner cannot be trusted. What we know is that he's a naive young man who doesn't have any clue 
about the depth of the depravity of Israel and the way in which Zionist Israel, which, by the way, is not the same as the Mossad, which has integrity. Right. My people in the Mossad hate Nehanyahu, Netanyahu. They hate him. The Mossad? They think he's an evil man. I did, they I... absolutely are certain that a two-state solution is needed. Hmm. So don't put all this on the Mossad. They're professionals who do their job. But all of us who are serious professionals understand that basically Jared Kushner was probably lied to and took it hook, line, and sinker. And let me say, this has happened to people like Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It's a matter of public record now that when Franklin Delano Roosevelt went to England, the British lied to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and they presented him with people that they claimed had just come back from behind enemy lines. And they were trying to get Roosevelt to believe that they had special sources and methods when, in fact, they were simply lying to the president of the United States. My bottom line is I want to give Jared Kushner the benefit of the doubt. He needs a deep counterintelligence probe such as he has not experienced. I'd like to clear him, but he also needs to be taught that everybody, and especially the government of Israel, is a world-class liar that has absolutely zero respect for the interests of America. And by the way, all Americans are considered to be Gentile girls in the Jewish Zionist mm. mindset. I played tennis with a, uh, with a very Orthodox Jew at Muhlenberg College. And I asked him one day how he reconciled nailing a different uh, Gentile girl every night. And he said to me, Shixes don't count. This is how the Zionist leadership views the United States of America. We are a shiksa. We don't count. Wow. And until you understand that, you cannot understand the depth of the disdain. Remember the USS Liberty. Israel attacked a U.S. naval ship and tried to sink it and tried to murder everybody on the USS Liberty. And Lyndon Baines Johnson covered it up. Okay. I will never, as a naval officer, I will never forget the USS Liberty. Between the USS Liberty and Shiksas Don't Count, I know all I need to know about the state of Israel. So, Robert, I mean, this is crazy. So, so you're saying, how do they have so much control over our government? Is it because of blackmail? Yes. And in fact, I, I had to look it up because when I ran for president in... Um, in 2012, I wondered to myself, where is this Jewish vote, this third rail in American politics? It turns out there are only 9 million Jews in the United States of America. Wow. There are only 9 million Jews. Now, there's roughly 200 million eligible voters of whom 100 million vote. Mm -hmm. So the Jewish vote is less than 5% of the totality. Okay. The power of Israel in the United States, as well as the power of Saudi Arabia in the United States, as well as the power of Wall Street in the United States, comes from bribery. But Israel specializes in blackmail. Yes. And Jeffrey Epstein, who runs Lolita Island, which is wired for sound, he has yes. both Hillary and Bill Clinton on video with children. Okay. He probably has Chuck Schumer doing something Chuck Schumer is ashamed of. Mm -hmm. He has, perhaps within Trump Tower, because it turns out Trump Tower contains some Russian mafia elements and also some Epstein no-name hotel elements where people can go for a trice that is supposedly off the record and invisible, but in fact they're being recorded. Okay, So Jeffrey Epstein is the poster child, and he's a Mossad agent. He is the poster child for how the Mossad can control Bill and Hillary Clinton, among others. While there are rumors that they have video of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. I don't believe it. I think Donald Trump is not only super paranoid in a very positive way, he's also a germ freak. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. all things being equal, I am willing to believe that Donald Trump cannot be blackmailed. I know he can be bought. But I don't think he can be blackmailed. And my hope is that we, the people, will somehow get him to understand 
that he will be rich beyond his dreams if he restores integrity to the government of the United States of America. That is beyond any price that Lynn Rothschild could pay to him. Yep. Sorry about the dog in the back. No, no worries. <laughs> I, I have to go Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. Uh, you want to answer that question? Uh, with this one? Yeah, about uh, Ivanka. Yeah, I, yeah. So um, you have spoken several times. I've heard you say that uh, Ivanka has tremendous potential, maybe even yes. as the first woman president. Will, will you talk about that a little bit? I, I'm so pleased you asked that because after raising questions about Kushner's reliability and bearing in mind that they're about to have their fourth child, I want nothing more than to save Kushner, okay? Uh -huh. And by the way, one way you can easily save Kushner is by exposing any connections he has with the Mossad and then mm -hmm. flipping him back. Uh -huh. So that henceforth, he knows he can't get away with being a Mossad agent of influence, and he is truly loyal to Trump and the daughter. That will change the relationship. But bottom line is, I am not seeking to get Kushner out of government or away from Ivanka, okay? Now, having said that, I personally am hearing from a number of people, and I'm forming the impression myself, that Ivanka is the reincarnation of John F. Kennedy Jr. Yeah, you were saying that. And I said this last night on a Global Spiritual Revolution radio show, which is based in New York City with a black pastor, and the meme rocked. <laughs> Ivanka is the second coming of the Kennedys. Only she's a mix between the Kennedys and Rockefeller. <laughs> and I genuinely, I'm not Rockefeller, I'm sorry. God help me. <laughs> it's a mix between the Kennedys and Reagan, Ronald Reagan. I was a Reagan Republican. So I think Ivanka has enormous potential as a young person, as a smart person, as a wealthy person who could train under her father for four years. And I would go so far as to say she would be a superb candidate in 2020, as opposed to Mike Pence, yeah. who is an establishment candidate through and through. Right. So my personal commitment, if Donald Trump will get his head out of his ass and listen to all of us and not disrespect Steve Bannon, who is doing what he was supposed to do, mm -hmm. which is telling Donald to keep his promises and treat America as the first priority. So I want Donald Trump to be the most successful president of modern history. He is, without question, the first president since John F. Kennedy that is not a deep state appointee. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is priceless. Mm -hmm. So I'm absolutely committed to helping Donald Trump. And I've just released my second memo, Memorandum for the President 2.0. And it's been published at phibateiota.net. And I will put a link to it in the comments after you post this video. Yeah. Uh, as long as your video lasts. I'm very concerned about what I call Google Gestapo. Uh, Eric Schmidt is clearly leading a racketeering conspiracy. Yeah. And Google, Facebook, and Twitter are all manipulating both search results and trends. They're repressing pro-Trump commentary. They're elevating anti-Trump commentary. And now we've seen with Alex Jones and others, and even you guys, mm -hmm. Google is manipulating ad revenue right. in order to attack Donald Trump. Now, this for me, I may or may not have lunch with Jeff Sessions next week. I'm, I'm waiting to hear. If I do, my first priority, apart from supporting the pedophilia investigation, my first priority is to suggest that Attorney General Sessions instigate a racketeering investigation against Eric Schmidt and Google and Facebook and Twitter. I believe the RICO yes. racketeering laws should be applied to this endeavor being led by Eric Schmidt. Uh, wow. So going back to Ivanka, I really think she has enormous potential. I think she has a JFK-esque air about her. Uh, and I would like to see us rally around the Trump family. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I'd like to see Trump reconcile with his wife, Melania. He cheated on her in 2006, okay, when she was pregnant. This is not a cool thing to do. It happened. Now they need to come back together. I think she helped win the election for him yeah. because she passed the smell test with me and with America. So I want the Trump family to be happy and prosperous and the most successful presidential family in American history. But he's not going to get there with the current bunch of miscreants 
that he has around him. Yeah, you know, Robert, like, I don't say a lot when you're talking because you're awesome. <laughs> But I would like oh, to. You should you need to ask me questions? No, so that I but, but I would like to make a comment though, because a lot of there is a lot of Trump fans out there that are railing against us because we spoke out about the attacks uh, on Syria and and saying that we're not supporting Trump anymore. No, no, that is not. We're not not supporting Trump. It's just if I speak out about something that I feel was wrong, I have that right to do so. I mean, we're not mindless. Yeah. Well, let me let me let me let me add on this on this on this whole uh, Kushner thing. Um, I, I do have some people who have sources in the White House, and I'm going to read you an email that I just got, which is an exchange between Steve Bannon and Jared Kushner, and I absolutely believe this email. Um. Bannon and Kushner were arguing over whether or not to attack Syria over this false flag event. And it says here, Bannon told Kushner, America is no longer for sale to Israel. And Kushner responded, the American people are by definition stupid and they will believe what we have led them, what we have fed them for decades. Bannon then told Kushner that he would... Uh, no longer be allowed to serve his dark overlords in Tel Aviv, at which point Kushner complained to Trump. Now, I'm told that Bannon believes that Kushner is taking orders not only from the Mossad and APAC, but perhaps from others, and that Kushner has a private communications channel with Bibi, which I believe NSA is covering up from the president. NSA is not serving the president. By, by supporting the FBI and by supporting the president with counterintelligence information. Now, I've called for closing down NSA, but I want it because of mass surveillance and spying on politicians and so forth. But I really want to explicitly clarify that William Binney, the most senior executive, like a flag officer, like an admiral, William Binney is in Maryland and is available to help Donald Trump. He can pull the 30% of NSA that needs to be saved. He can pull all of the NSA databases on both the pedophiles and the 500 traders across the US government, perhaps including Jared Kushner. And he can present Donald Trump within 90 days of a list of people who can be indicted for treason. Okay? Now, NSA is not going to do that without a presidential order. Okay, so I personally now believe that Kushner has to be removed from the White House and he has to be placed under investigation. And I would put him in the Office of Presidential Personnel. In the CIA, we call that sending someone to a nunnery. So they're sent to a place where they have nothing to do with policy, but they can still be very helpful. I think Kushner has been compromised mm. by this outrageous missile attack on Syria. Robert, for those that don't know who William Binney is, can you... Uh, ah, yes. William Binney, it's my honor and privilege to know him. He is one of the most ethical, capable senior executives from the National Security Agency I have ever met. Many, many years ago, William Binney was the pioneer for building the entire NSA surveillance system. And he was trying to build it in such a way that it did not violate the privacy of individuals. He had what he called thin thread, which was a way of looking at metadata and of doing NSA's job without actually getting down until they had a court order and it was actually something they needed to do. NSA decided that it wanted to do brute force massive collection and they basically sidelined Binny and they hired SAIC to do something called Trailblazer, which is code for throw lots and lots of money at it without any quality control. And SAIC failed completely. William Binney is, in my judgment, the one guy that President Donald Trump could trust to dismantle NSA, shut down the 70% that is evil, and migrate the 30% that's worth saving over to the CIA, which I actually want to cut the CIA in half and then build it back up with a new signal, a directive for signals intelligence and a directive for imagery intelligence. And I've, I, I've, 
outlined all my ideas in, in a uh, post called Fixing Intel 2, which is easily found at Phi Beta Iota. So here's the bottom line. If Donald Trump wants Jared Kushner exposed as an agent of Israel, we can do that within 30 days. Okay. You know, go ahead, Ben. No, you go. Uh, so earlier you told me that Ron Paul agrees with your assessment about everything that's going on right now in the in administration. Can you speak uh, on that a little bit? Well, first off, although I'm a huge admirer of Ron Paul, I've reviewed uh, several of his books, and I particularly like his collected speeches, A Foreign Policy of Friendship, Commerce, and Peace. Uh, and I also like his book on liberty. Uh, I mean, he's just, he's, he's a man that, that, like Donald Trump, has some flaws, as we all do. But by and large, he embodies what America should be about. Right. And he embodies that we should be focusing on Main Street instead of Wall Street. We should be focusing on peace instead of war. Um, so I follow Ron Paul, and I notice that he agrees with me, not with me personally, but he agrees that this Syria thing was a false flag, mm -hmm. okay? And he also agrees <clears throat> that Donald Trump should never have approved a missile attack. Now, James Mattis is also suspect as a potential traitor, mm. because Mattis has been moving troops and armor and other pieces of military equipment into Romania and down toward uh, Syria, because Mattis wants to invade Syria. Okay, now, your listeners need to remember that ISIS is a creation of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Israel, and the United States of America. Yes. ISIS was funded by Saudi Arabia. It's staffed by uh, Iraqi uh, Sunni officers that we disenfranchised. And it is trained and equipped by the CIA and the Pentagon. I mean, anyone who talks about defeating ISIS is in effect either an idiot yes. or a hypocrite. Right. Okay? I, yeah. Right. We are ISIS. I know. I, 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 ISIS is us. Okay? And one of the things that frustrates me is the degree to which Donald Trump simply does not have a competent staff and he doesn't have people who are able to give him little note cards like I would saying, read my fucking lips. We <laughs> created ISIS. Okay. He knows that. He even said that on the campaign. My fucking lips. Stop funding Saudi Arabia. But he okay. knows that because he he campaigned on the fact that that uh, Hillary, Hillary Clinton created him. Yeah. And funded part of the him. Problem. I, I think part of the problem, and God bless our president. I I really I really really want to see him succeed. Part of the problem here is that he's trying to beat the deep state with the games that the deep state, with the rules that the deep state has yeah. already established. He can't do that. Right. The only way Donald Trump can defeat the deep state is by changing the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. And the way he changes the rules of the game is with an electoral reform act and by barnstorming the country, not just with Steve Bannon, but with Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, Cynthia McKinney, Virgil Good, any libertarian other than Gary What's in Aleppo, Johnson, uh, and Jill Stein, and Ellen Brown, and Ralph Nader, and Jesse Ventura. McKinney. I would yep. be happy to be the token white Latino. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I do speak Spanish fluently of a Colombian mother. Yeah. Um, and the bottom line here is Donald Trump is gifted at reaching crowds. He's gifted at um, getting people to pay attention. He's gifted at free media exploitation. Mm -hmm. But right now, he doesn't have a strategy. He doesn't have a staff. He doesn't have the, the, the germs of the ideas that I tried to communicate to him through Rents Priebus, through my first memorandum to the president, and now through my second memorandum to the president, which I've been told has been delivered to him. Okay? So I now have three different people with direct access to Donald Trump who have delivered at least two of them have delivered the message. The third one is in the United Kingdom and may or may not have. Okay? Bottom line here is Donald Trump is at a fork in the road. He can continue to fuck it up and play the game by the deep state rules, or he can crush the deep state by mobilizing the American public with alt-right as his base. Mm -hmm. But then you add the Sandernistas, you add the Latinos, you mm -hmm. add the people of color that Cynthia McKinney 
and Brother Cornell West could mm -hmm. bring along. And we have a lot of black pastors that love Donald Trump, okay? I think we can unite white and black and brown and red and yellow, and I think we can keep the 99% as a block. And I think Donald Trump can lead the 99% to victory against the 1%. And we do it with a truth and reconciliation approach. It's absolutely essential that we not back the Wall Street jackals into a corner. Okay? And oh, by the mm. way, this false flag and this missile attack, mm. this is good for Goldman Sachs. Mm. Because Goldman Sachs, which has at least nine spies in the Trump camp, Goldman Sachs bet the wrong way on oil futures. Mm -hmm. And Goldman Sachs right now is desperate because oil is down around $51 a barrel and they bet on it's going toward 200. Mm -hmm. The single best thing that we could do for Goldman Sachs is start a war in the Middle East. Yeah. So screw Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Steve Bannon was right. Donald Trump was wrong. Jared Kushner might be a traitor. It's time Trump figured this out. Yeah. What do you think uh, Russia's next move is going to be? Well, I'll tell you, I'm really impressed by Russia. I'm really impressed by Russia's restraint. Uh, Rex Tillerson may or may not believe it, but Rex Tillerson is telling lies to the public. He's saying that uh, that Assad absolutely did this uh, chemical attack, and Rex Tillerson is wrong. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, Rex Tillerson is one of the smartest men in the world. And so my suspicion is that he knows that Assad didn't do this, and when he goes to Russia and talks to Russia, they're going to agree that Assad didn't do this, and they're mm -hmm. going to talk about what's the next step. Now, I personally think the next step has to be Russia and the United States of America agreeing that the United States will get out of the Middle East and will no longer financially support Saudi Arabia or Israel. Yeah. yeah. We have to pull our money and our troops out of the Middle East. And we have to, frankly, I mean, as Saddam... Uh, Assad is the last Christian leader yeah. in the Middle East. Right. Yeah. Uh, and how is it that the United States of America is attacking a Christian leader as opposed to Muslims or Jews who get $30,000 for every man, woman, and child in Israel from the American taxpayer on the backs of the individual wage earner? Yeah, just uh, because I, I just think it's a bunch of Luciferians that are masking raid as uh, Christians, but let, that's for another day. Um, here's This is a very important point that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, actually, Robert. So you're aware of Russia and China are now in talks about abandoning the dollar. Oh, well, they've already done it. And in fact, that's been going on for several years. I just published a piece for the Russian... Um, International uh, Affairs Council, which has also been published at um, Phi Beta Ida, talking about a post-Western world order. And what is going to happen here is not only is an alternative banking system coming out, which is going to bury the U.S. dollar, That's right. uh, which has been severely devalued by Goldman Sachs and derivatives and so forth. For example, gold uh, certificates. Yep. There are 600 gold certificates for every ounce of real gold. That's right. right. Okay. The the scams that Wall Street has been running with with the support of George Bush and Dick Cheney and Bill Clinton and Joe Biden uh, are just astonishing. And I really think Donald Trump needs to <clears throat> realize that he can let Wall Street fail. Yes. They're not going to really fail because they've already got tons of money in Switzerland and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. They've sucked the blood from the stone. Mm -hmm. What Donald Trump needs to do is focus on Main Street America uh, and not just the inner cities, but the farms and, and, and the suburbs and the whole bit. OK, so I think Donald Trump is desperately lacking for a grand strategy that helps him understand all of the threats. The highest threat to America is poverty. The second highest threat to America is infectious disease. The third highest threat to America is environmental degradation, including poisonous food from Monsanto. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm really concerned that the president with the best of intentions is surrounded by mediocrities or traitors. And he doesn't have a world-class team uh, that can say, Mr. President, here's the totality. Here's the holistic everything. 
And now here are your intervention points in the next week, in the next 30 days, in the next 90 days, in the next year. And oh, by the way, here are the things you can start now that will start to pay fruition in four years, eight years, 16 years, 24 years. Okay? He doesn't have that. He's got a lovely, lovely, lovely young lady who was probably a honey trap for Hillary Clinton that Goldman Sachs groomed as the head of their nonprofit enterprise. She's his director of strategy. And when Hillary imploded, I think they flipped her and turned her into a honey trap for Ivanka. Um, and so what we're really talking about here is Goldman Sachs has got Donald Trump sliced and diced. And he doesn't have a counterintelligence element that is really making it quite clear that there are other alternatives than surrounding himself with everyone who wants to cheat him. Let's finish up uh, this uh, with your memo. And you had told me earlier that you had uh, three forms of uh, uh, delivery methods uh, of your memo to Donald Trump. Would you like to talk about that? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> what I have, what I have. Uh, you messed I me have, up on that one. <laughs> I have a very, I have a very respected um, Fox commentator who, who, understands and respects my work and also understands and respects William Binney's work. And that person, probably a man, uh, is, uh, <laughs> is in direct communication with uh, the president. I also have a CEO uh, who was personally responsible for documenting the three million illegal aliens and therefore earned the president's trust. Uh, and Finally, there is a very, very promising person in the United Kingdom that the president listens to, who is not part of the UK government. Um, so bottom line here is your listeners can find the memorandum at Phi Beta Iota just by looking for Memorandum for the President 2.2. But I'll also post a link once you post this, uh, this tape. Um, but what I essentially say, and I'll just read them off, the eight ideas. Donald Trump likes single pages with, with like eight to nine points, okay? So number one is flush the White House. Uh, number two is take back the Office of Presidential Personnel, which Rents Priebus, Judas Priebus, has been basically manipulating uh, to take advantage. Number three, create the Trump channel. Brad Parscale has reached the peak of his Peter Principle, okay? He is so over-promoted and he doesn't know what he doesn't know, all right? So Trump's idea of a PAC and, a, and all this stuff outside is a complete failure. Uh, however, um, Greg Phillips, who's the CEO of AutoGov, and Mike uh, Rick Davis, who's the CEO of Polmol, and myself and some others, we can create the Trump channel overnight. And the Trump channel would bypass Google, Twitter, and Facebook. It would literally leave them marginalized. It would allow Donald Trump to send what we're calling a Trumpet out to every American citizen. I love it. Then it would allow every American citizen, let's we're thinking of we're preparing for 150 million. Uh, we would we would get 150 million responses in, which would then be digested for the president to appear on a single screen. And then with that screen he can drill down by issue, by state, by gender, by age, and he can literally interact with the American public in a digital war room. Okay? What this does is it puts the President of the United States of America in direct electronic contact with every single citizen that desires to be in direct electronic contact, and it allows him to then call up individual congressmen and senators and say, hey, are you aware that 17,000 people in your district believe this and you're way off base? And oh, by the way, if you don't come along with me on this, I'm going to be in your district tomorrow. This is part of your, it sounds like it's part of your open source system. Well, yeah, the open source agency would actually, would actually be the information engine because one of the beauties of open source intelligence is it can be shared with the public. In fact, it can be shared with the congressional jurisdiction. CIA does not provide intelligence support to Congress today. Okay, so the Agriculture Committee does not get intelligence support. Neither does the Department of Agriculture, all right? So we have 
an intelligence community today that for $70 billion a year provides less than 4% of what the president or a major commander needs. General Tony Zinni said that, 4%. And he was running two wars and 12 joint task force actions at the time. In contrast, open source intelligence for a very small amount of money can provide the president with 96% of what he or she needs for very, very little money. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, the open source unit for the U.S. Special Operations Command was answering 40% of all special operations intelligence requirements from all units all over the world, 40% for $5 million with 22 people. Contrast wow. that, 40% for $5 million with 22 people compared to 4% for $70 billion. Mm -hmm. wow. Five million. 70 billion. What part of open source intelligence are we not understanding? The part that cuts 75% of the secret intelligence budget. That's right. why they have marginalized me for 30 years. Donald Trump has made it possible for me to come out, if you will, from my chains. I just have a question, Robert. Can we be part of the uh, Trump News Network? Yes, in fact, <laughs> Trump, no. Let me tell you something. If Trump, if Trump were to embrace these ideas, one of the ways we get immediate effect is by working with every single person who has been pro-Trump from day one. So that includes you guys, the Hagman and Hagman Report, the Common Sense uh, uh, Show, uh, all of you, okay? And we basically create a cycle. So you guys would become like bundlers or, or super citizens. Uh, and then you would carry on town hall conversations. And this would all be brought back up to the president, <clears throat> who, by the way, would appear on your show more often. Woo uh, yeah, so I love one that. of the concepts here is we throw the press out of the White House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wasted space. Yes, we turn that into the Trump studios. And then we ask everybody in America, including the fake news media, to send in questions. And instead of Sean Spicer, who may or may not be Rents Priebus's lover, I don't know, <laughs> um, you know, instead of Sean Spicer standing up there and dancing, what we do is we take those questions and we assign them to exactly the right person in the government who then does a seven minute video with an answer that is then approved by the secretary of that cabinet. And then that's posted to YouTube and the answer is given back. Over time, you create a mosaic of authoritative answers to real questions from real people. Mm -hmm. And let's just screw crap news network. Right. We don't care what they think. Yeah. And we don't care what they say because now the president is broadcasting directly to the American public on every issue, okay? So I, I am absolutely certain I can bury the New York Times, the Washington Post, oh. and Crap News Network. Oh, yeah. And Fox, frankly. Yeah. I'd say 80% yeah. of Fox is worthless. Yeah. Uh, Tucker Carlson and Brett Baer and uh, a couple Judge Napolitano yeah. are among the three people I pay serious attention to. And Charles. But everybody else is a clown. I mean, we've got three morons in the morning and four out of five in the afternoon. It's a joke. Um these people don't do serious anything. No. Um, so I would really, really like to see this happen. So in my ideas now, Trump Channel, create the debt be gone website. Individual Americans owe $3 trillion. This is comprised of student debt, mm -hmm. health debt for the elderly, family credit card debt, and small business debt. Now imagine a website where every American in debt can personally appoint Donald Trump as their agent for renegotiating that debt. Now imagine if he has $3 trillion worth of debt that he is personally responsible for renegotiating. I think that puts him in a very strong position to go to Wall Street and say, look, Bubba, you've already gotten your money out. You're just sucking on interest now. Here's the deal. You're going to cut the debt by 50%. And if you don't, I am going to cancel the debt, and I'm going to give every single American a presidential pardon. Yeah, we need a jubilee. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> a biblical jubilee, yes. But see, here's the cool part. He has the documentation appointing him as the personal agent. He does a negotiation, the art of the deal, which he's really good at. Mm -hmm. 
and then he cuts them off by the balls. And oh, by the way, he issues presidential pardons to every single debtor. It's flawless. Hey, Robert, I, <laughs> let's end it this way, and it can take as long as you want to answer this question. I had one of our viewers uh, say, I don't think that I can watch the long version of your interview because it's going to be so negative. So what I want you to do is end this up by giving me the best case scenario of everything that could happen with Trump, his administration, and our country within the next one year. The best case scenario is that Donald Trump implements the eight ideas in my memo, becomes the greatest president in modern history, sets Ivanka up to be president in 2020, destroys the deep state, frees all Americans from debt, has a job for every American, uh, stops spending American money overseas, pulls out of NATO, pulls out of the UN, and supports the Open Source Everything Engineering Initiative, which lifts up the five billion poor so they stay home. One last question. <laughs> one last question. Uh, two last questions. Uh, number one, and then we'll end it. Who is the, 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 the biggest enemy right now in your mind in Trump's administration of Trump? That's a real tough one. It's almost Donald Trump himself. Um, I, I, I'm tempted to say Paul Ryan, but I don't think so. I think the biggest, and are you asking just the administration or Wall Street or anyone? Uh, we can go ahead and expand okay, it. Okay, the Rothschilds. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The Rothschilds. Lynn Rothschild and Evelyn Rothschild are Donald Trump's biggest enemy. Biggest because ally. they are absolutely certain that they can buy him or neutralize him. Biggest ally. Putin. I agree. Incredible. Okay. Fully agree. And I would like to add also everything that you said for the best scenarios is actually a possibility. Like that yes, really could happen. Yes. Yes. Good point. That's a very yeah. good point. Donald yeah. Trump has the power to win the Nobel Peace Prize yeah. shared with Putin, Modi in India, and Xi in China. Yeah. These four guys can dump the deep state on its ass and elevate humanity. And there will be flowers and peace and love and everything. <laughs> you know, uh, that's I hope that wasn't too negative. <laughs> that's how I wanted to end up uh, this uh, this conversation. And Robert Steele, you know, uh, every time that we talk to you, I'm just uh, I'm amazed at uh, your ideas. And Thanks. I keep on getting a newfound respect for you and your ideas, you know, uh, we love you, man. I mean, you're just a Well, thank you. And let guy. me just really stress that my ideas are in the service of Donald Trump or Ivanka Trump until such time as they self-destruct, and then I might run for president. woo -hoo! Well, so be it. But I really, really would rather have Donald Trump get it right now than wait. So let's end up by saying that Donald Trump has all the chance to still be the greatest president of all time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No question about it. In fact, you know, God works in mysterious ways. If he recognizes out of this debacle that this has been a Bay of Pigs mo uh, moment and that Jared Kushner is totally compromised, then maybe Trump will, in fact, be cleansed mm -hmm. and start fresh. Let's have a born-again Donald Trump. Absolutely. When do you expect to hear from Jeff Sessions about your luncheon? Well, not from Jeff Sessions, but from the guy who's setting it up. I'd say oh. by Tuesday. Oh, good yeah. luck with that. So yeah, keep us updated on that. We'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so for all the uh, for all the folks out there that are Trump supporters that think that we're bashing Trump and you didn't listen to the very end, well, you did a disservice to yourself because we just said that he could be the greatest president of all time, and we do believe that. Uh, Mr. Steele, it's been an honor once again. God bless you. Take care. Thank you so much for spending time Oh, it's us. my, listen, and I will also check in on your website, and I'll make sure I answer questions and comments and stuff. Thank you. And for those intellectually challenged. Oh, no, no. Are you still there? Read my eight books. Okay. okay. Oh, uh, and just one other thing. 
Uh, just one other we thing. Always have sure. One more thing. All right. Uh, so we have a Patreon account. I'm not talking about that, but we're thinking about offering somebody in a raffle or something that we can do a uh, a three way conversation with a, a person from Patreon. Would you be willing to do that? Where they can ask you questions. Where they can directly. ask you questions. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're the, you're the man. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Thank All you, right. sir. All right. Okay. Take, Take care. care. Have a great bye -bye. night. Thank bye -bye. you.